Blessings to your friend. I'm Marcus Stevenson, Jr., and I am just delighted you have took this opportunity and this time to allow us to minister into your heart. I want to encourage you to stay tuned in. God has something very special He wants to minister into your life. As always, we don't take this moment for granted. Feel free to call someone, text somebody, maybe yell in the other room and tell them this ministry is on the air. You're special to God and you're special to us. Stay tuned in as you hear and see what God has planned for your life. Now, look what he said here. Verse number 10. Believers are not that I meant Father, follow me. He said, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that what? <laughs> look what he said. He does works. You know what he's saying? So how you not believe the Father's in me when you hear all this word I'm speaking? I often wonder that about sometimes people that I've been around for years. How you go around wondering if I'm a man of God? You think I just make this stuff up? People don't like transparency. You can study from now to you blue in the face. You've been studying. You don't get this stuff unless God is with you. No man know the Father but the Son and he to whom he revealed himself to. That some things flesh and blood can't reveal to you. It has to come from God. So it's Tanya, so it's Reagan, so it's Jay, Brother Curtis, uh, Mom, a bunch of y'all can just sit here and got all type of wonders in your mind about me. You don't know it unless I tell you. But my wife knows stuff you don't know. Because it's been revealed to her. Why are you listening to me? And although we're not better than other people, stop letting people who don't know God trying to teach you about a God they don't even know. You clucking at everybody at church. I ain't going to everybody at church. Folks ain't saying nothing. <laughs> red Rover, Red Rover. I need to hear more than just a dog being called. I call the dogs in the world. Yeah, there's some who let the dogs in. And one preacher said, who let the dogs in? Not out. Who let them in? Hallelujah. We better leave that alone. You go to church, you don't know nothing. You remember 30 years. Don't know. And I'm going to say it to you, And then you go somewhere with somebody teaching, preaching word, and in one service, you didn't learn more than one service. Y'all ain't ready for that. And what you didn't learn 30 years. <sighs> Humming like a grid. <laughs> I need more than. I don't know it sounds good, but sounding good don't mean I'm getting knowledge. Them that know their God shall be strong. Why am I so weak? Because I don't know. Why well, come every time depression comes against my life, I don't rebuke it? Because I don't know. I go off what the commercials say. 99% of the people are depressed. No, I'm in the 1% then. Amen. And we get so convinced. I've had people trying to convince me. That's a real thing. And I'm saying, I know it's a real thing. But ain't nothing no more real than God. Yeah. Don't tell me all because you ain't got the faith. Yeah. All right. Keep eye on things for me, Dick. Watch this. He said, verse 11, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Now, here's what I like about God. Look how plain he said this. Or else. Believe what? That's what I'm saying. People be around ministries and churches where you see manifestations and you still walked out lost. And some people ain't seen them. Some people have experienced them for their own self. And they still in the parking lot scratching their head trying to figure out was that God. You said it was God. You know it's God. Ain't nobody told the preacher nothing about your business. Because you ain't even told nobody that in your business. Can I come down here? We think signs come just to make us look big. God don't give signs and wonders in the church so we can look like the greatest people in the world. He gives signs and wonders to prove to you that he's God so you can get an appetite to know him. Because when you know him, now you know who you are. How can you know what type of bloodstream you have. How can you know what type of genetics, what type of, and so, so, so tongues of nerves, how can you know what type of heredity you have unless you connect it to your biological parent? 
And this is the problem. We didn't receive the adoption of the enemy. The enemy that took us in because he's the God of this world. And the God of this world then blinded our minds, got us thinking worldly, got us acting worldly, got us talking worldly. And God is saying, no, 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 no. You need to go back to your roots. You remember that movie, Roots? Go back to your roots and realize who birthed you. Realize who your father is. Because the more you know your father, the more you know your makeup, the more you know your buildup, the more you know your heredity, the more you know your genetics. That's why the psalmist David said, I will not be satisfied until I awake with his likeness. Come on, somebody. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. I'm sick of church. I don't want to come to church to hear a good song. I want to know who this God is. And that's why people are leaving church right now, because church has become nothing more than a show. The person trying to perform church don't even know who God is. And if they don't know, they can't teach you who he is. That's right. That's right. You got people with the same Bible we got talking about God don't heal. And I'm asking myself, can you just read? Oh, come on. I've never had so much warfare and fight until God started uh, manifesting the gift of prophecy in our life. And people, that's, that's phony, that's fake. And I'm saying to myself, what do you think Jesus did? He saw a woman at a well he never met in the natural and told her her past, but also told her about her future. He's seen a man named Nathaniel who he knew he was going to call to be a disciple. And Nathaniel got excited after Jesus prophesied and said, I saw you under the fig tree. And he said, son, if you think there's something, you come follow me. I got much more than that to tell you, son. Hallelujah. We used to sing a song many years ago. We probably need to bring some of these songs back. And some of you elder saints remember it? They said, you don't know like I know. See, I told you you knew it. And you just said, what it done for me? When you have an experience with him, your experience should overshadow everybody else's thoughts and opinions. And that's what Jesus is trying to let Philip know. Son, if you don't even believe what I'm saying to you, can you not believe for the works you've seen? Do you not know these things are not the works of the devil? These things have to be from a supernatural source. It has to be God to tell a man about your past. It has to be God to tell a man about your future. It has to be God to know you've been hurting where you're hurting that. It has to be God to preach a message that you've just been reading about the day before. Amen. Hallelujah. We right there among God's presence and still won't recognize him as God. You got to be careful. And some stuff I got to say is just blunt. Some people got some, they call the things of God to devil. Man, you're a fool. You don't call the things of God to devil. Somebody like, you better watch them laying hands on you. No, you watch your old Tommy on Saturday night laying hands on you. Can I come back over here? Man, can I, I look quiet on that note. <laughs> We're so suspicious of the things of God. But yet when it comes to everything else, we let freedom rule and reign, and we're so free to let them do whatever. Have that spirit of God. God, whatever your will is, let it be done in my life. As long as it's you, I'm okay with it. Amen? I won't be that much longer. I got to show you something, though. I'm not helping anybody. Can we go to the book of Matthew, the 16th chapter? Now, I said the title of the message is who we are. Somebody say who we are. Now, when I said who we are, the first thing you thought about is just us as people. But when I say we, I mean who he is and who I am. Because you'll never know who you are until you realize who he is. Can I show you that real quick? Just hold your attention to the word of God. You're going you gonna, to you gonna leave and say to yourself, my God, thank you for revealing who I am. Watch this. Matthew 16, verse number 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Well, Jesus knew it was some gossiping. They said, some say, you are John the Baptist. 
Some say you're Elijah's. Others, are you still with me? Amen. Jeremiah's or one of the prophets. Jesus said unto them, but who do you say? You don't mind chatting with your neighbor. He's been waiting to talk to him. Just look at him and say, who do you say he is? Do we not see this happening now? How we so adamant about what everybody else say about him? Sometimes we hear other people, whether it's on social media platforms, whether it's other audio tapes or whatnot, and you hear them may preach some that contradict what I preach, even though I show you in the word. And now the enemy trying to set you up to be confused in your mind. We always take what do other people say he is. Because you have to determine what they say because you can't determine even what you say he is. You so care away about their opinion because you don't have that assurance and that confidence to know who he is for yourself. Amen. I can talk to you all day long at the church and ask you, who is my wife? And when you get finished telling me, it don't make you right. You just guess it. How you going to know my girl better than I do? Something is wrong when we go outside of God to find God. When we leave God looking for him, and this very thing happened to Jesus' own parents, they birthed Jesus. Mary birthed Jesus, but yet the very thing she birthed, she lost it. It's something how you can birth something, and after you produce it, you lose it. You got to keep up with what you birth. He was once producing the anointing. He was once producing love and joy and peace. He was once producing praise. But now you didn't lost what you once produced. You were studying. You was praying. God was speaking to you. Now you're like Samson. You're shaking, but you don't feel him. But the good thing about God, just like what Mary and Joseph did, they had to turn around. The Bible said they sought him among their kinfolks. They sought him among other places and he wasn't there. But guess where he was? Right there in the temple. And this is the problem we have right now. Some of us looking for God outside of you. And what you fail to realize, just like what Jesus said, he's in me and I'm in him. He's supposed to be right there inside of your temple. Why is it you can see God in everybody else, but you can't see the God inside of you? Thank God you bragged on brother so-and-so and, -so and sister so-and-so. But God want to look down and say, well, I'm well pleased, my good and faithful son. He want to be able to brag on you because you realize there's a God inside of you. That Christ in you is your hope for glory. He wants you to realize uh, that the seed was planted in you. You can heal the sick. You can raise the dead. You can cast out devils. Uh, you might not be able to call me or somebody else on the phone, but you can call on the Lord. Uh, and your father is rich, and he'll answer your prayer. We put too much confidence in man. You can't say I'm preaching cult because more people preach this. They want you to have so much confidence in them that you just think it's just them. It ain't me, it's God. He never said these signs follow apostles. These signs follow them that believe. Amen. Church needs some praying women in it, not gossiping women. Talking about what the sister down the road did and how you can't stand sister Summers that was a high heel a few inches higher than yours. Hey! Need some praying men in it again. Men who ain't just coming to church to see what woman they can monkey around with. I don't care if you go I come to preach. We need some men full of valor, full of virtue, men who are full of war, know how to war in the spirit realm. To say we're taking our young men back from the streets. They're not going to go out there and slang dope and smoke dope and act like a bunch of foolish young men. We need some men that's going to stand up for truth again and say I'm leading my family to church and some women that can teach the yellow women how to be grave, how to be chaser, how to love their families, how to take care of home. Yeah. Hey. But how can you do that when you don't know who you are? I found out a long time ago, age ain't number to number. Sometimes the old mama's still trying to kick it in the streets. Mm -hmm. 
It's a whole lot more people other than Stella who trying to get their groove back. Amen. He said, who do you say I am? Talk to yourself and say, God, I want to know you. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know where you meant that or not, but oh, you know where you meant that, but you should mean it. How can you serve a God if you don't know him? Thank God you're in church. Don't leave and say, well, I guess I ain't got to come to church. Pastor told me he hates sick of church. No, no, no. I'm sick of fake church. Yeah. Church was designed for our gifts to operate together. Yeah. And church was designed for us to assemble ourselves so we can hear what he says to us as a whole body so we can know more about him. Amen. We have made church everything else. Church became a show. Give me a tight jean wearing preacher with some smoking lights and give me a rock band. And oh, what a time we had. Nobody got delivered. Nobody got healed. Folks don't even talk about the Holy Ghost. It's a joke now. Hallelujah. But I found out something. Only the real thing lasts. Hallelujah. You know, food goes look good until they, until they start decaying, don't it? Hallelujah. Watch this. You know, hold on. You're going to be eating catfish this evening. Say, Lord, I think I know who I am. He said, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered. And he said, thou art the Christ. Is that in your Bible? Come on, follow me here. Thou art the Christ. You are the anointed one. Watch this. And the son of the living God. Simon had to answer that. He knew that. Jesus answered and said unto Simon, blessed art thou. God, I wish I could. Woo! See, sometimes what makes preaching hard is because sometimes we're fighting for the attention. But I'm going to tell you something. When you start being attentive to stuff like this, you'll walk out of here and a little seed will be planted for you to start searching more and more about who God is. Because when I read that word there and I just see that first word, blessed, that let me know that Jesus had a realization and he wanted Peter to have a realization that now because you know who I am, you're blessed. And many times we don't know we're blessed just to know who he is. You're blessed not because of your money, not because your children are healthy. You're not just blessed because you got nice things, but the real blessing is knowing who your creator is. There are some very successful people who's been extremely successful but yet there's something missing down in their heart because they was not raised by their father and they don't know who their father is, don't know who their mother is. And they can have millions of dollars. And I've heard one or two of them say this myself, said I would give up all that just to know who my folks is. Because they knew there's no real peace outside of knowing where I come from. Amen. My purpose and my preaching is not to bore you, but we got to make church more than just about an emotional move. You need to get a desperation in you again. God, I truly want to know you. I want to know this God that said he appeared to Moses the burning bush. I want to know this God who, who, who brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. I want to know this God who used Elijah to defeat those false prophets. Who is this God that stopped the lions from messing with Daniel in the den? Who is this God who, who find himself using people to perform miracles? Who are you? I'm tired of hearing about your experience with him. I want to experience him for myself. Yeah. When you watch a good movie, when you got a friend who a movie critic, the first thing you say, girl, you got to watch that. Mm -hmm. You know, why some of y'all can't pray and read because you stuck on them, them shows all the time. Mm -hmm. Girl, you, I've been stuck on this new series. You got to watch this series. Y'all ain't saying amen to nothing, boy. <laughs> you, you want everybody to know it. And you be promoting that. Why? Because you had an experience with it and you didn't take nobody else's word for it. You know for yourself, that's a good movie. Right. How can you truly be a witness for God when you ain't even witnessing him yourself? Right. How can you truly tell others how great he is when you never experienced his goodness and his mercy? Hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. Watch this. He said, flesh and blood. I'm sorry. He said, blessed are thou, 
Simon Barjona. Somebody say, I'm blessed to know him. Blessed to know him. For flesh and what? Blood. Has not what? He said, son, your cousin ain't told you this one. Right. Uncle Jesse ain't sent you a note and told you this. This ain't been flesh and blood. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. But my father, which is in heaven. Verse 18, well, I want you to take notice of. And I say unto you that thou art what? Here. That word Peter is like saying you're a little stone. And upon this rock I will build my church. Now, now take notice. After Simon realized who Jesus is. Mm. Now Jesus tells Simon who he really is. You think you're Simon, but son, you Peter. You think you're Lodorus, but you're Sister Lodorus. This is why you got to know him, because you'll never know you until you know who he is. And this is why you never see you in him, because you didn't know what in him means. You thought in him meant because you got a new dress, got your hair done, you came to church with another little fan. <laughs> you spent your whole life trying to be some guy ain't called you to be. That's why you're switching like a helicopter. Pants hanging half off your butt. What up, cuz? Because <laughs> you don't know who he is. That's why you're paying people back. Because you don't know he's a God of vengeance. That's why you're lying on your tax papers. Because you don't know he's Jehovah Jireh. He'll provide for you. I know y'all been trying to play possum. I just been, I've been wearing that possum out today, though. I just want you to know playing possum ain't going to change my message. When you don't know him, you act in ways you shouldn't be acting. And you do stuff you shouldn't be doing. Even the world got a saying, they say, it's time to level up. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to level up. Now, I may have to turn around when I say this. But when you was dating that little nobody in the hood, you didn't have to do certain stuff. When you start dating somebody at the next level, you know all of a sudden your whole conversation changed. You ghettos, they come. You want to talk to ghetto? Y'all be <laughs> You ain't talking ghetto around them. You was reading the menu, you couldn't pronounce it. You just, let me get that right there. <laughs> Amen. God will cause you to level up. He will cause you to come to a higher rim in life. But the reason why you can't come to that higher rim because you're comfortable being that big fish in a small pond. You hang around other people who don't know him. So you don't have a hug in your heart to know him. So when you see little preachers like me, you get discouraged. This should encourage you. I want to know him. I want to experience him. I want more than just sitting up in a pew in church. I want to leave knowing my life has been changed. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I thought I was a preacher, so I started hanging around other preachers. I did. I said, man, I'm doing something. I started hanging around other preachers who were so calm, and I started seeing that north of one. I said, ooh, man. I'm putting a mandate on that anointing. I want some of that wisdom, amen? Because iron sharpened iron. Who am I? Why am I here? When you know who God is, he revealed it to you. Not only did God revealed to Simon who Jesus was. Now, Jesus reveals to Simon who he is. You ever try to be like the old folk, put the cop before the horse? You trying to figure out how you, who you are before you figure out who he is. Amen. Come on, come on. Amen. Wow. When you figure out him, you figure out you. Hallelujah. Don't you tell me you can't figure it out because the Bible said everyone that seek it, find it. Everyone that knock it, the door coming open. Hallelujah. Let me take you one more place here. Jeremiah 1. I'm done. 
I mean, I made you jump and shout. But I helped everybody who listened to me. I'm saying, preacher, I'm trying to listen. I'm just so sleepy. I fell asleep. Buy the CD. Hallelujah. I hope I'm not embarrassing you, are you? I just be making myself at home with people. Talking to them like I know them my whole life. Don't I? Hallelujah. God showed me you. And he showed me how he's depositing his word in you. And he's building you up in ways. It's like a, um, it's like a full turnaround God's doing for you. And it's like there's a becoming a hunger and a thirst for more of God right now, too. It's like he's allowing a fire to be reignited in you that the enemy tried to push down. And the Lord told me to tell you to go for it, to just go for it. Because this is what God wants for you. Because I see God doing like a 360 turnaround in your whole life, in your mind. I see him doing this also in your money, too. I see a 360 turnaround for you. And I see you encouraging other young ladies and other women. And I see you talking to them about depression. I see you talking to them about bad situations, bad relationships, and bad cases. And I see you tell them how God delivered you in your mind. And I see you walking in such a peace. And I see this peace, and it's almost like you all have such a peace that nothing is going to really disturb your mind like it used to. Because I see there was a time, I see two hands that were just coming in closer on your mind, and it's like the enemy was trying to just clamp in your mind and just try to flood your mind and get you under such a head and such a pressure. But I see the nail scar hands of God just removing those hands. You getting a hole in your heart, and it ain't just because I see you here now, you getting to the point you want to be where God is at. And you want to hear what God is saying. And not only do I see you sitting here listening, I see you going back and listening to messages online and listening here and there and the other. And it's almost like, God, just feed me, just feed me. And every time you begin to eat the word of God, it's like I see you coming up higher and higher and higher. It's like I see a fluid in you coming up. And God is saying he's going to restore the joy of your salvation because every day ain't been a good thing for you. You go through some hell. Sometimes you sit up and you try to even counsel and help your daughters and they don't want to hell you or something. But God said, get ready, woman. This is your time. This is your season. This is your time of a breakout. I want to personally thank you for allowing us to minister into your life. I'm sure something was seen, something was heard that was a great blessing to you. And I want to encourage you to get this message in its entirety. You can go to the phone and call. You can go to our social media platform. Maybe send us a message. You can even text the number that you see on the screen. We want you to get this message in its entirety. And also we would love to add you to our prayer list and to our mailing list. This connection is of the Lord. Not only did God connect us just for this one-time program, but I believe this connection should last for the remaining of our God-given life. Thank you so much for your love and support. And I want to encourage you to stay connected to our ministry. God bless you.